Hey, what's up for one? Eric Ross, the guy with the eye here today to talk about event photography. I know it's not one of the most exciting things in the entire world, but it's something that I shoot, something that you can shoot, and something that you can make a living with, and it's not as hard and terrible as you might think. Let's dive into this. I'm going to tell you my mindset, what I do mainly at events, and how you can shoot events, and essentially what gear are, what gear should you be using and how to prepare. Let's dive into it. So like I said, event photography isn't the most glorifying thing in the world, but there are so many different things that you could classify events. You know, what are you doing essentially? What is the main goal? The main goal is really to document the day and it's to capture like keynote speakers, uh, all depending on the event and stuff that you're on, but it could be a bakery event, it could be a corporate event gig, it could be, you know, Comic Con, Photo Plus, all that kind of stuff, but essentially what you're doing is you're capturing candid moments of you know people in the environment doing what they need to do and that's really the important thing because a lot of these clients you know I do stuff with corporate you know gigs where they have these big seminars these big summits they like to call it and essentially what they do is they get a bunch of clients to come in to meet the team to meet the software that they're using and to really just go on and have workshops and all that kind of stuff but these companies want these photos for their publication, for documentation, you know, so that way they can use them later and that everyone could see, you know, that it is more than just a company, it's a human side of things. And usually these events could be, you know, one day, three days a week, hopefully you're put up for them. But essentially, as I said, the primary goal is to get these photos and to turn them over, you know, in a decent amount of time, all depending on whatever contractual thing you have. But, you know, my mindset going in, in is capturing the day from beginning to end. Now, for example, I was in Baltimore shooting this one conference, and we began at 7 in the morning. The last event was about the last event, the reception that they have for dinner and everything every night, uh, ends at around 9 p.m. So from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m., I am on my feet, I am shooting, I am walking around, I'm doing everything I can, backing up photos, um, you know, and it is just a constant hustle, and I just did that for four days or so. But once again, it is a business that you can really get into, and it's just something, you know, the shooting is not necessarily the hard part, but it is making it interesting. So if you know how to expose an image, that's fine, that's great, but to make speakers and these events, which just, you know, these little things that take, you know, an hour, two hour, you know, clips at a time, to make them look interesting is very, very difficult. Um, you really just have to change things up. You have to get used to shooting in rooms with, you know, 100 people, 60 people, 200 people, and to capture, you know, your candid, your clicking off as people are speaking, people know that you're there, so don't be nervous about that. But it's just something that you have to be used to. And, you know, it's just something that once you're there, you post up and you start to get shooting and that's that. So just to get over that fear, it's kind of like street photography in a way, but an enclosed room where everyone knows that you're there. You know, long day aside, a lot of, you know, a common question I get is like, what gear do I use for these events? When do I use these types of gears? And, you know, what kind of settings do I use going into these? And essentially, what I shoot with is my Nikon D700, and I'm always on the strap. It really, really takes a lot of the pressure and all that kind of stuff off of my neck, and it really just diverts it, uh, you know, to another. It really just alleviates all of that. And essentially, for the uh, conferences where you're in these big meeting rooms, where you have, you know, the bosses, the CEOs, and everything like that, I'm using my Nikon 70 to 200 2.8 and I'm standing a little bit further back, clicking them off, you know, you know, going regular, going a little bit of vertical, all that kind of stuff just to change things up. And essentially I use that to pick off the uh, the people in the crowd and you know all that kind of stuff, all those types of candidates. But when you get into the smaller events, uh, and you know, most of the time flash photography isn't allowed. Uh, you could find that out beforehand, you know, uh, for these, some of these cases, you know, people cannot uh, deal with flash because they might be epileptic, they could go into a seizure, a seizure, all that kind of stuff. So you have to make sure that you ask that beforehand. You're really gonna have to ride ISO in regards to that, but I'll cover all that in a second. But, uh, you know, after that, my, my 24 to 70 pretty much lives on my camera in regards to receptions uh, types of thing. You know, you're getting the people, you know, after they're eating, you know, people are in groups, having fun, <laughs> laughing, all that kind of stuff. You want to capture those peak moments in, you know, in those conferences and those types of things. And that's what your whole goal is to make these events look fun, look interesting, get high angles of things looking down at reception or, or, you know, make the room look big 
big, show all the people at the summit, show people that this is where you want to be and that is the ultimate goal is to make it look interesting, to look fun, that their money is worth something you know, at these things. But the great part is usually if you're in one building, you know, you're in several rooms, but the lighting is pretty much always the same. So I actually, typically I shoot on auto white balance, but since pretty much all the lighting's typically the same, you know, in one location to another in the same building, I like to kind of just dial it in so that way it takes an easier part of my workflow out. So I will use a custom white balance. Uh, usually, you know, it's very not that great lighting. So, you know, 3200 and type of thing is pretty much what you're gonna be at to kind of alleviate, you know, alleviate, get a little bit, maybe the green out, all that kind of stuff to balance out to make it easier. But you're gonna be at higher ISOs, so don't be afraid of throwing your camera at ISO 1600, 2000, 2500, you know, to get these photos and the clients understand and they don't know what noise or grain is anyway. So what do I do? Nikon D700, it's uh, 12 megapixels, 24 to 70 for the smaller event photos, um, but for the big conferences where I got to be a little bit further back and I'm not as intrusive, my Nikon 70 to 200, pick off candidates, pick off the speakers, um, you know, typically no flash, but if there's a flash, I will definitely use it so that way I can use lower ISOs. So I think I pretty much covered everything in that, you know, that bit of information there. I know I kind of got a little bit long there, but there is a lot of information to get uh, you know, event photos, all that stuff is a business. It can be lucrative because these companies do have money to, well, pay. And, you know, it's really worth it to them because you're making them look more human and not just a brand. You know, you're making it look fun because for some people it really, really is anyway. So that's what I got. If you guys or girls have any questions or comments, you know, I went over gear, briefly settings, you know, higher ISOs. Uh, you don't want to use shallow apertures unless you really, really have to because of the situation, you know, just in case of, you know, the depth of where you're at and everything like that in the focal plane, but ride your shutter as well, you know, but watch, once again, watch for shake. So if you know how to shoot, you can do it. Just make it look interesting. Once again, any questions or comments? I had a couple, um, you know, I had a couple questions, you know, about how do I shoot? Why do I shoot? What do I do to make it look interesting? Um, you know, so I decided to make this video. Once again, long video side. Thank you very much, Eric Ross, the guy with the eye. Any questions down below, I'll help you out. I'm just rambling.